Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya. and welcome to the Math FSA Boot Camp Series and this is video number 15. All right, so pretty much we should be on a roll by now and you know how this works. You're gonna go ahead and pause the video and solve not number one and number two because this is actually one question that has two parts. So basically it's two questions, but whatever. You might be thinking, Miss McCarthy, I don't have the worksheet. What are you talking about two part question? Well, if you click the link below or somewhere around this video, you will be taken to my website where you can download the worksheets that you need for this episode and the other episodes in the fifth grade Math FSA Bootcamp series. Now is the time to pause the video and solve this two part question on your own, throw down your best and then come on back to check your work, go. Welcome back fifth grade. Okay, so we've got two different question types here. We'll identify the first one and work it out. So I'm seeing one, two, three, four answer choices. So what kind of question is this? A multiple choice. There should only be a one right answer, but we will make sure. Now let's read it and break it down. There's a lot of words here, a lot of words going on. It looks a little scary, but it's gonna be okay. We can do this. We just need to break it down and take it one step at a time. All right, this question has two parts. Part A, which statement, that means which one of these, ooh, careful not to get the bubble, Miss McCarthy, otherwise the computer scanning my test will think I meant to pick A. Which statement correctly describes the product, the product is the total when we multiply, when multiplying a whole number by a fraction less than one. Okay, so if we were to have a whole number, let's pick a whole number between one and five. Five sounds good, okay. Five, and we multiply it by a fraction less than one, that means that my numerator needs to be less than my denominator, like two thirds. My numerator's less. This question is just asking what's gonna happen to the product. So when I take a whole number and I multiply it by a fraction less than one, it is going to be less than five. Whatever that whole number was, the answer will be less than five. Because when you multiply by a fraction less than one, it actually decreases the value of the number that you originally started with. So let's look for something like that. The product, which would be this answer. So the product, so this would be our product. So we're trying to see what happens to the product. The product becomes less than the whole number. 
the product will be greater than the whole number because, well, we can just eliminate that right now, right? Because it's not going to be greater. It's going to be less. But let's finish it. The product will be greater than the whole number because when you multiply, the product is always greater than the two factors. That's not true. We just talked about that. When it's less than one, it makes it less than the original whole number. Let's look at B. The product will be greater. Nope. It's going to be less than the whole number because multiplying by a fraction always increases the product. Nope, we just proved that right there. So here we have the product will be greater, the product will be greater. And here we have the product will be less and the product will be less. So it's got to be either C or D. Let's look at the reasoning. The product will be less than the whole number because, this looks good so far, because multiplying by a fraction always decreases the number. Okay, always decreases that whole number or makes it go down. Now this did happen here with this particular fraction, but it's not just any fraction because a fraction could be like this, three halves where the numerator is greater than the denominator. This would be a fraction greater than one. And if we multiplied five times three over two or three halves, it would actually make it larger. So it doesn't always decrease it. Only if it's a fraction less than one will it decrease that number. So no. Let's look at D just to make sure. The product will be less than a whole number because multiplying by a fraction less than one, there we go, always decreases the number. Yes, when you multiply it, it uh, does always decrease it. So D is the correct answer. See how much thinking is on my paper here? How I marked up my text to have it make sense for me? How I took the words and I made an example? That's the kind of stuff that makes a good test taker, okay? So make sure that you're following along and with your own style, mark up your text. All right, part B. Before we go through the question, let's identify the question type. We've got rows, we've got columns. We need to match them. This is a matching item. And for those of you who've been watching for a while, you might know that this is my favorite kind of question type. Right, it says fill in the bubbles to match the value of each expression to its correct description. So here's what the value would be. And here's the expressions, okay? Notice we have the same number, 4,123 for all of them, right? And they all have the same number we're doing, we're multiplying and all that. What we need to pay attention to are the fractions, okay? Seven ninths, that would be less than one. So when we take this whole number and we multiply it by a fraction less than one, the product is going to be less than the original whole number. So which one says less than the original whole number? A, right? Good. Next one, we have nine sevenths. This is a fraction greater than one. How do I know that? Because the nine is in the numerator, which is greater than our denominator, which means it's going to be more than one whole. When you multiply a whole number by a fraction greater than one, which one is going to happen? Yeah, it's going to be greater than one than 4,123. We don't even have to do the math for these. We just have to understand the mathematical reasoning behind them. Here we have 4,123 times 7 sevenths. Well, 7 sevenths is equal to what? One whole. And anytime you multiply a number by one, it's going to be the same number. So which one of these should we pick? Equal, right? It's going to be equal to 4,123. Awesome. And the final one. We're multiplying 4,123 times 9 ninths, which is also a fraction that is equal to 1 because the numerator and the denominator are the same. So we also need to mark in the equal to column. That would be choice K. All right, still showing my work, showing my reasoning on paper. That's the kind of thing that you guys need to do. Let me go ahead and point you in the direction of some more videos where you can practice the same skill that we worked on today. All right, fifth grade, let me throw some more practice at you, okay? So the first link that you're gonna notice is to McCarthy Math 155. You're gonna wanna click on unit six and 
really pay attention to days 95 and 96. Those are episodes on scaling and resizing fractions, which is what we did in this video. Now, McCarthy Math 155, it's a jam-packed high-energy math intervention series, and you can access the videos if you are a member. However, everyone gets a free seven-day trial, so if you know that you need some help, totally go over to my website, click the link, and sign up for a free trial and absorb as many videos as you can in those seven days, and who knows, maybe it's the right fit for you and you want to become a member to access all the videos. Tons of schools using this program as their math intervention and the kids love it. They basically beg their teachers for it every day. I mean, begging teachers for math, that's amazing. And it's usually the kids who aren't really the biggest fan of math who are requesting the videos to be shown. So just saying, I really put my heart and my soul into this series and I hope that you love it. I am going to throw another free video in there to the same standard that we worked on, and this is to my How to Pass the Math FSA series. It's the first series that I created on YouTube, and when I created it, it was centered around the fact that the test was a computer-based test. It, the FSA is not a computer-based test anymore, so the questions, they look a little bit different, just for some of them. But that's why I created the Math FSA Bootcamp series because this reflects the paper-based version. So everything we're doing in these videos in this series reflects the practice that you need for the upcoming test this year in 2021 or 2022. It's still great practice though, so check out that freebie episode and uh, yeah, get your practice in. I'd love for you to go ahead and follow me on my social media platforms. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy. I'm also here on YouTube at McCarthy Math Academy. And while you're here, can you go ahead and smash that like button for me? Not just to make me feel good, but to show your support for my mission. You see, I'm on a mission to make math fun, make it click and make it stick for as many third, fourth, and fifth graders and their teachers as possible. So by smashing that like button, you're helping more students than you know. So thank you so much for that. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video. And finally, before we go, I just want you to know that you were created for a purpose. That's right. You are the ones that we have been waiting for. So find your light and shine it bright. Watch out world because we have a whole new generation of world changers ready to step it up and make this world a better place. When you have the choice, choose kindness and you always have that choice. And I will see you all on the next episode. Can't wait.